Hey guys, and welcome to this video where we will take a look at prepared next plane to see which of the two simulators stand out as the best right now on the market. It has been a few years now since I last did a proper comparison between the two simulators, and so I decided that with the release of P3D V5, an X plane now introducing Vulcan, it would be the perfect time to take a look at which of the two simulators currently stand out on top. As we did in the last video, I will be comparing both simulators without any mods in their vanilla formats, and this will be done through a range of factors. This will be the range of aircraft available, the quality of the default aircraft, the worldwide scenery and sky environments of both platforms, the night environment, the simulator stability, the modability of both sims, and of course the flight dynamics. Based on the feedback from the community the last time I did this, I will also now be comparing two more factors the hardware system requirements and optimization for those who may not have the beefiest of systems, and of course, the price point. A disclaimer too, that a lot of this will be based on my own opinion. I am trying my best to keep this as fair as possible, but unfortunately, this is not always possible, and you guys may have some very different ideas to what I have, which I'd love to hear down in the comments below. So, without any further delay, let's get right into this and take a look at what we have on offer. Firstly, we will take a look at how many aircraft and variations are available across both platforms. This section will not take into account the quality of each aircraft, just how many of each you are available to fly from the get-go. X-Plane 11 comes with 20 aircraft, a glider and a helicopter for you to fly at your pleasure, for a total of 22 loadable vehicles. This is a nice number, and does give you a full range of aircraft from commercial to light options. Prepared however, does give you a whole lot more. You may not get a passenger jetliner, but what you do get are 25 aircraft, 10 helicopters, 3 avatars, 2 submarines, and even a drone. That's a total of 41 loadable vehicles, and not just the ones that fly. Prepared is sold as a much more in-depth training platform, and so having this variety certainly helps in giving you more of a choice. With twice the loadouts available, P3D gets the first point. Next we will take a look at the quality of each aircraft sets. Both are very strong contenders and have massive pros when it comes to detailing. Both platforms feature aircraft with fully 3D cockpits and functional displays. X-Plane also includes four commercial jetliners alongside its fleet of general aviation and these are more than flyable through their series of working buttons and switches and fully functional flight management systems based on the Boeing 737 but works to be universal across all planes. The default Garmin G1000 is also very highly detailed, functioning as if it were the real thing. P3D also deserves special mention of its quality, given that its predecessor FSX generally saw aircraft that was certainly to be desired. By introducing planes from leading third party developers by default, it certainly gives it an edge. These aircraft are all of very high quality, with fantastic modelling both inside and out, and give you a lot to play with when flying. Default aircraft in both simulators are really good and can be loads of fun to fly, meaning in this case, I will share the points between both platforms in this round. Now we start to look at the worldwide scenery that both simulators include. Prepared uses a series of ground class tiles to determine the worldwide scenery below. This allows for the simulator to generate a world that is similar to real life in terms of building density and likeness, but does not follow real world buildings and roadways, bar major highways. While this does look good from a high altitude, up close, you know you're not getting the real deal. Ground mesh is also created to a high level, but nothing that really shines outside of mountain ranges and some coastlines. X-Plane however, takes data from OpenStreetMap to determine everything from roadways to river locations to individual houses and buildings. This is a great way to recreate the world, while keeping everything as close to authentic as possible. Ground mesh is also of a higher resolution, meaning you can enjoy a lot more details in hilly areas, as well as a greatly defined coastline. X-Plane also does a great job at scaling the world, making flights at 5,000 feet look like 5,000 feet, while P3D does make you look a lot lower than you really are. Airports in X-Plane are also much more up to date, and look a lot better thanks to user input through the scenery gateway. The database used by P3D at the moment is now over 18 years old, and this certainly starts to show, with some airports looking very out of date. Adding that X-Plane users can enjoy contoured non-flat runways, 
it is certainly easy to give Laminar the points for this section. Next up is the sky environment. While X-Plane does a really good job in simulating the ground, the same can't quite be said for the skies. It is however very close. One thing that I do like about is how natural X-Plane can look. Colours are very close to real life and this does make scenes look realistic. Clouds too are not terrible, creating a volumetric feel to them while flying through covered areas, even if it does kill a few of your frames. I am however not so keen on the bloom, especially in morning and evening periods, where it covers the ground in a murky blue layer, realistic to an extent, but completely kills any view of the ground you have. Colours in Prepared are a lot more vivid and certainly a lot more screenshot friendly. The introduction of True Sky has also massively improved the environment with fully 3D volumetric clouds now filling the world, something that we've only seen once before through the sadly cancelled Dovetail Games Flight Sim world. The way the sky interacts with the ground is far better in my opinion, and I find much more of an appeal in this over X-Plane. You may however very much disagree with what I have to think about this, and please let me know down in the comments below if you do. Night environment is always a fun one to compare, especially as P3D introduced 3D lighting, something that FSX has missed out on before. The world does look dark and dynamic lighting from aircraft does light up everything in its path to a much more realistic extent. It's a massive improvement from what we had before and does make flying at night a lot more fun. X-Plane 11 however is still the king of nighttime flights. The way the world lights up following real world roads below, it can only be described as mesmerising. The different variety of street lights too, the traffic lights, the police cars, the airport taxiways, you just won't find anything right now on the market that's best than what we've got in this. X-Plane is a clear winner of this round. Stability is what we'll be looking at next. Both X-Plane 11 with Vulcan and Prepared Version 5 having seen massive jumps in their optimization, with P3D especially improving on its CPU-GPU mix and RAM usage, something that previous versions were limited in due to its 12 year history of being a 32 bit platform. While making 64-bit more stable, it has also minimised crashes, not entirely, but massively compared to before. x 11 also enjoys the benefit of being a 64-bit platform from launch, while Laminar Research own all of its source code. This means their ports to the higher bit systems is a lot cleaner and therefore very stable. With flight simulator crashes mostly now being a thing of the past, albeit a few isolated cases with how computer software works, it is now fairly safe to say that both simulators are rather equal in allowing you to make a full 8 hour long haul flight and land without the sudden issue of freezing and error messages getting in your way. When it comes to mods, both simulators give you a lot to play with. Both have a wide scale scene of developers creating everything from jetliners to prop, scenery packages to utilities. X-Plane also hosts some very respectable developers in the likes of Tolis, FlyJSim and Flight Factor just to name a few, while veterans such as JustFlight and Alabeo have also made the jump onto the platform in recent times. Aircraft are of high quality and give you a fair amount in the way of systems fidelity and flight dynamics. Prepared however, does come out on top with very respected developers such as Flight Sim Labs, Aerosoft, and the study level kings themselves, Precision Manual Development Group or PNDG, sticking by the simulator through thick and thin. Systems wise, these are developers that have spent far longer on the original FSX and even FS2004 platforms, giving them much longer to consolidate and learn every aspect of what they're working with, and this has led them to create and release some truly fantastic aircraft onto the market. In my opinion, Prepared comes out on top when it comes to modding, but compared to three years ago, things have certainly never been so close. Now we come on to arguably the most important part of the flight simulator, and that's how it manages its flight dynamics. This is a much easier comparison compared to other factors, given the massive differences between how the two simulators work. Prepared uses data tables to determine how an aircraft will fly. While it does allow for realistic maximum capabilities through numbers, it does however mean that the flight is not affected by many outside elements, such as wind and turbulence, and on aircraft where this is poorly defined, it can feel like you're flying on rails. X-Plane on the other hand, uses something called Blade Element Theory, 
which simulates the airflow around an aircraft. Here, the wind and air will move over and around your wings and body of the aircraft, reacting your aircraft as if you are flying the real thing, if not very close to it. My only real gripe is that sometimes prop drift can feel a little too exaggerated, but for the most part, flying an X-plane has been an absolute pleasure and is very dynamic when compared to the other platform. Take this from someone who's flown a real aircraft. Until P3D can manage to create a similar system where airflow is simulated around an aircraft, X-plane for me will always come out on top when it comes to dynamics. Now we come on to the comparisons that you guys want to know. First of all, we'll be taking a look at the system requirements and optimization of both simulators. Here we'll take a look at what kind of potato it takes to run each platform, which in turn should also see smoother flights and higher frames on top tier computers. Here things also get quite tricky due to the very different specs that each require. P3D is quite happy to run on a minimum of 4GB of RAM and a further 4GB of video RAM. This means you won't need a supercomputer to run it, and in fact does show the benefit of some older software, especially as you don't really need a lot to run it. It does have a drawback however, and that is you are limited to Windows 10, both due to its former ties with Microsoft and the requirements of the all new DirectX 12. Vulkan is the all new rendering engine that has been introduced by Laminar Research for its x 11.5 update. What it does is it balances out your CPU and GPU usage while ensuring that each core of your CPU gets a shared amount of work, rather than depending entirely on your CPU core zero. While you do need a higher 8GB of RAM to run the simulator, you are able to run it on any DirectX 11 capable card, with Vulkan being especially good to AMD card users, pushing performance to a much higher and stable level than it was before. As well as Windows, X-Plane is also compatible with Apple Mac and Linux, allowing it to be run on a much more higher variety of systems. X-Plane as a result will certainly get the points for this round. Finally, we now come to the price of both platforms. Here, we'll be taking a look at two aspects. The price point of the simulator alone, and also, the price per aircraft that is available. X-Plane 11 currently sells for $59.99 while an academic license of prepared will set you back $59.95, that's a whole 4 cents cheaper. You do also have the option to buy a professional and developer license for P3D, which offers you different features for both, but we won't go into the details of those, as most people won't be choosing either of those options. However, if we now break each down to a per vehicle basis, you'll start to see a lot more of a gap between the two. X-Plane is a variety of 22, priced at just $2.73 per vehicle included. That is a more than fair amount that splits across the work put into the simulator by the developers. But don't forget that Prepared has nearly double the choices available, pricing at only $1.46 each. That's an insane amount, especially considering that a lot of third party made aircraft would generally be selling at $20 to $30 a piece. Yes on the outside the pricing is very close, but once you start to break things down, you then get to realise how much of a value for money you're getting with prepared. So, there we have it, the final scores. Things are certainly very close between the two platforms, scoring 4 points apiece, with the other two comparisons being so close you can only really draw them. Both P3D and x 11 have come a very long way since their first releases, with just about every update benefiting the wide majority of users. Me personally, I also use both simulators on a very regular basis, down to the fact that both sims excel in certain parts that the other may not do so well in, as well as the variety of add-ons that are available for both being really fantastic for what they are. When it comes to choosing what simulator is right for you, it ultimately comes down to what you want in virtual flight. One person's general aviation setup may be a whole lot different to another's commercial jet trekker, Likewise, we don't look at other simulators on the markets too, such as DCS World generally being agreed by all as a go-to platform for warplanes and dogfighting. But with the pending release of an all-new platform coming to us very soon, who knows where this comparison may draw out in 6 months time. <laughs>